everybody, it's me, Blanche, and welcome back to a holiday edition of Feasts in the Middle East. And I have a special recipe for vegans out there that want something really fancy for the table. And even if you're not vegan, you're gonna love this dish. Wait till I show you what I got planned. During Thanksgiving and Christmas, I see a lot of vegan field roasts that are flooding the markets. But unfortunately, if you look at the ingredients, it's like paragraphs long with a lot of unidentifiable things that I've never seen before. And I thought, why not make a vegan Wellington that looks beautiful as a presentation, but also tastes delicious. And this is actually so easy, it's ridiculous. So let's get started. Let me show you how easy it is to put together. So, in the supermarkets right now, they have a lot of vacuum packed chestnuts. These are already cooked, they're peeled. It's so easy to put together. Um, so right now, I don't even need to do anything. I don't need to cook it or peel it or anything. It saves a lot of time. So I'm gonna just put these chestnuts, just one packet, um, inside my food processor, just like that. And to that, I'm going to add one cup of pecans. And this is going to add a lot of heft and protein and good healthy fat to the, to the Wellington. So now I'm just gonna pulse it. Let's pulse it a little more. I'll show you the kind of consistency that we're after. It's just gonna be crumbly like that, just like this. Now to that, I'm going to add just like a slice of bread. I know this is weird. This is just a slice of wheat bread and this is a great way to use like the, the ends of bread that you don't wanna use. Um, this is optional, but I find that it, it does well in absorbing liquid later, so that'll keep the loaf together. So here's the bread. We're gonna just pulse it some more. Beautiful. So we're all set. So this is gonna be like the sort of ground beef of the, uh, field, of the uh, field roast or Wellington or whatever you wanna call it. So now that I've got that taken care of, what I'm gonna do is uh, go to the onions. So right now I have a half of a large onion that's already been chopped up and I'm going to add it to this pan of olive oil. So I just say like about um, a tablespoon or two of olive oil. Let's heat up the pan. And what I'm gonna do is stir this onion until it's like soft and translucent. So let's just heat up the pan a little bit. We're gonna add the onion. What I'm gonna do is uh, season it. I mean, I always like to season everything with a little salt as well as some pepper. All right, so let's, got that sizzle going on. So let's stir it around. Okay, you see how soft these onions are and they're gonna add a beautiful sweet flavor to the rest and really just give it a, another dimension, right? So I'm gonna just add the, these onions to the breadcrumb mixture. And now I'm gonna prep the mushrooms. Now, mushrooms are awesome because they're also meaty and they absorb a lot of flavor. And you know why I really like portobello mushrooms? Because they're so easy to prepare. You don't have to wash a bunch of individual mushrooms. You've just got two big ones and chopping is really easy. I'll show you how easy it is. So I'm just gonna cut these mushrooms into cubes. So here we go. We're just gonna cut it into cubes. They're gonna cook down. Any shortcut possible, I love. So like, look how easy it is to prep portobello mushrooms. Honestly, if you take a big bag of mushrooms and start prepping it and chopping it, it'll take you so long. And don't buy the pre-sliced mushrooms, guys, please. Those have already started oxidizing. They're already turning brown. They're not as fresh. It's not, it's just, no, just don't do it. Stay away from pre-sliced mushrooms. It's better off like just getting some portobellos and doing this instead. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, uh, uh, my pan's already fairly heated, but I'm gonna add another uh, tea tablespoon of olive oil, right? So I'm just, it's already heated before for my on onion, so I'm not gonna wash or anything. I'm gonna add about two cloves of minced garlic, all right? So the garlic, I'm just, you know, with garlic, you always wanna be sure you don't uh, stir it too long, like l a minute or less, because the garlic will start burning. What I'm gonna do is dump all the mushrooms on right now, okay? So let's dump all the mushrooms. What I'm gonna do is saute this together. The water from the mushrooms is gonna leach out and prevent the garlic from burning. And of course, we are going to season the mushrooms. And I love using fresh herbs, particularly thyme. Thyme and mushrooms almost always go together. 
So if you ever make any kind of a mushroom dish and you want to add some herbs to it, and you're like, what do I add to it? Well, always add some thyme, fresh thyme in particular. So I've got these thyme and it's very easy with fresh thyme. You just kind of, you know, pull the leaves down from top to bottom like this. They've got a nice woodsy flavor that complements the mushrooms really well. So we got some thyme. Of course, we're going to add some pepper and uh, some Himalayan salt. There we go. And keep stirring this around until the mushrooms are cooked down. I wish you guys could smell this between like the garlic and the thyme. Oh, the smell is amazing. All right, you see that the mushrooms have cooked down beautifully. And what I'm going to do is add it to the other mix of the pecans and the chestnuts and the onions. All right. So I'm going to mix all this up. Now this can use some added moisture. Okay. And so to add some moisture, I'm just going to add about a quarter cup of vegetable broth. I suggest you add a little bit at a time because you don't want to add too much. Otherwise it'll get like too soggy and you don't want it too soggy. You just kind of want it just right. I'm adding this because it's going to make the required mold uh, that's going to stick together. This is probably the consistency I want. You see how it's kind of like forming a, a, a paste almost. So usually with, with Wellingtons, they use puff pastry and yes, you can use puff pastry, but I find that pie crust is really easy to use. It's more pliable for me. And like, for example, I'll show you how I made this oblong. So I took one pie crust that I had thought out. And what I did was I took uh, one edge and here we go. I took one edge to make it oblong. So I cut one side like this and the other side like this, right? And I just take the edge and I add it to the bottom. And like I said, it's very pliable. So it's going to make a nice sort of like oval shape. There we go. And here's the other side. One here and one here. All right. I know this looks weird, but this is what I did for the bottom. Okay. So we've got one here and what we're going to do is empty out the contents of this stuffing right onto the pie crust. Let's see if this, do you see how I made this sort of mold here and it's sticking together nicely because we added that vegetable broth in the end and that vegetable broth even added some extra flavor. All right. So now we're going to carefully put the other side over it. So let us put that over it just like that. And the, uh, this is great. This really helps me align it properly, right? All right. So what I'm going to do is just kind of fold it around like this all around the edges. You have to work it with it with your fingers so that you get a smooth surface all the way around. And if you have any extra pie crust, like I do right here, this is a great time to embellish your uh, Wellington to make it look really presentable. So what I do is I just roll it out like this. Oops. And I make leaves. So, I mean, you don't have to be particularly artistic. It's just like, you can just make a leaf like this. So make one indentation here and another like that. And so there's my leaf and we'll just make like the little indentations to resemble a real leaf like that. Oops. One, two, three, and one down the center. And there you go. You've got your leaf. Okay. So we'll just put this down along the center and just continue to make leaves, you know, as much as, as many leaves as you want.
All right, so for the finishing touch, this is totally optional, but I like to take a big fat fork like this and just make an indentation all the way around like that. So here we go, just like that. And for some extra sheen, usually they put egg wash, but this is vegan. So I'm going to just use a, a nut milk or like, a, and use something that's like heavy on the fat. You know, the more fat, the better for that extra sheen. I'm just gonna put that over everything. And we are going to bake this at 350 degrees for about 40 minutes in the oven until it's nice and browned on top. And thankfully I have one that's already made so you can see what it looks like. Isn't this gorgeous? It's almost too pretty to slice into, but I'm going to do that right now so that you get a nice kind of cross section. And I added some extra leaves for uh, just a pretty garnish. Let's just put this here right now. And don't worry about the extra. I always like extra pie crust, don't you guys? So here we go. Here's the cross section. It looks like meat. You would think this might be a beef wellington, but I'm gonna just take a bite here. And the thyme and the garlic and the mushrooms are so harmonious with the pecans and the chestnuts add an extra meaty flavor. I could probably finish half of this right now, but this would go great with like a side salad or if you even wanna add some gravy to it, you could add gravy to it as well. So I hope you enjoyed this and let me know in the comments below if you wanna see more vegan types of entrees like this. I hope you guys all have a safe and happy holiday and I'll see you again next time on Feast in the Middle East. Ha, 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 ha.